trip to Manila to meet my Filipina, part 7. Today I meet Pinky, her mom and her aunt at the mall across the street from the condominium where I'm staying for some sushi. Afterward, I resume my exploration of the neighborhood. Avoiding sidewalks, I'm learning that the streets are where I belong and the cars seem to know where I am and I know where they are. The sidewalks are just too rough here. And I see some really sad things, but you know something? This stuff goes on, and I also see some very happy things. These people took a bicycle and turned it into a family car. And though you see poverty everywhere, these people are happy, playing basketball down an alleyway, or just kids hanging out. It, it's just an amazing place. Well, even the police, as they guard the bank entrances and the doorways, they all have a smile on their face as they tote these shotguns. Everybody around here is just really happy. And you know what? I love what I see. I love everywhere I go and I'm just happy to be happy. And the next evening, I'm invited to meet Pinky as she gets off of work. She's working at the physical therapy clinic and it's really interesting to get to finally see where she works and what she does for a living. It's very, very, very interesting stuff. And her being in the physical therapy business makes it just that much easier for her to understand me. Well, as the evening closed near and she got the place closed up, we put all the money in the truck and they take it away and we head off for a new adventure. So early the next morning, we took off for the next adventure. I want to be in a boat and I want to snorkel. I want to see fish. I want to see coral. I want to have fun while I'm here. I love boats. I love the water. Well, these guys, they got me into a boat, but they're off delivering Coca-Cola to somebody, and they really don't know much about the snorkeling situation. As a matter of fact, um, they really couldn't fit us for snorkeling. But we had fun. We were out there floating around in the water with these guys that are on their way to an island to deliver some Coca-Cola. Well, he says, I got some snorkeling gear. So we go to this island where they probably live, and he says, I'll be right back. So he runs up the hill, and we get stuck sitting here looking at laundry and boats and all kinds of stuff for about 20 minutes. Well, I guess he struck out, but he did find a pair of little goggles for me. And so we took off again, and we're floating around, and, and these guys said, Well, I think we found the spot for you to snorkel. Here's your spot. And I could see people floating around fishing and protecting themselves from the sun, and... Uh, we go overboard, and once we're in the water, we realize there's just a sandy regular bottom and there's only an occasional fish or two going by, but you know what? We're in the water, we're swimming together, and we're in the China Sea. How romantic is that? And you know something? We really did enjoy this. This was such an awesome, awesome day. And even though there was seaweed getting hung up in our feet and everything and we couldn't see anything but a sandy bottom, we got to be out in the sunshine, we got to swim together, and it was an incredible time. And as soon as we got this boat back to where we were going, we were hungry. And Pinky found me some food, all in aluminum, and she dished it all up and brought it out to the car, and we had a wonderful lunch together. Well, she even found some junk food, but mm, that's okay. Well, the next day got even more adventurous. We took that borrowed car Tita Angie let us use, and we headed up to Dagaitai. And there's um, Ta'al. Um, it's like one of the most active volcanoes. And of course they have a Starbucks. But we came up here for a purpose. We came up here to meet Pinky's family at a restaurant. And what an incredible place it was built on the side of this cliff. You could see the fish nets down there. Once we got to the um, restaurant to where we all met, here's um, Etok and Yoshi. Yoshi's just a little guy then, and um, here's her family. All of her aunts met us there. I think just knowing that I got to meet all these relatives, her sister and Yoshi and her mom and her aunts and everything, really made Pinky happy. Well, we climb back in the car and down the road back by Starbucks we go. And on our way home, we found some amazing things for sale. These fruit markets were just awesome and she found some things for us. I found out that uh, I like just about all that stuff, but uh, jackfruit? No, I think I'll pass on that. But one thing I did find on our way home was buco pie. 
that soft coconut made into a pie. Oh, I can't believe it. it's unbelievable. It's almost as good as lechon. Woohoo! You know, we even went so far as to try to get married while we were there together. Um, Pinky had me drop her off at the city hall and she started working on the paperwork to see if we could get married. And um, we got a ways, but uh, things didn't work out too good there. Um, she sent me off to McDonald's to get her some lunch and as I was going through the drive through the car broke down, some boys helped me push it over and I had to wheel six blocks back down to the courthouse with the food. Um, when I got there she was coming out the door and um, she said we had to take a class together so we did and they taught us some really strange things. They had to make sure we knew the facts of life and, and uh, it was a little odd but we got a certificate for that and we were well on our way. But you know, things just got really tough for Pinky. She had her family pressuring her because um, we were rushing into things, you know. We'd only known each other a few months and we have all these big plans of getting married and we're living like we are married together. And we're both Christian people, we're both, you know, God-fearing people and, and we knew what we were doing was wrong but we felt the pressure of, of what's ahead of us. We wanted to know each other as well as we could so that we could, um, you know, have a educated, or a, for lack of better words, we needed to know that we were going to be okay if we got married, and we both were quite certain that we would be, but we hurt a lot of feelings in the process, and that's my biggest regret is how, because we made these decisions to get married so quickly, um, and everyone in our family was telling her to slow down and to wait, we felt the pressure because I live 7,000 miles away, and we needed to learn about each other and we needed to make these big decisions and then you know um, we were gonna have to somehow get married so things got kinda rough towards the end and uh, it is a regret but the story goes on and I'm gonna finish telling it I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and thank you very much for watching this video and thank you for keeping up with the story